They say that you are what you eat. Healthy food serves as fuel to power your body and boost its functionality. But what about your spirituality? What type of spiritual fuel does your body crave? In this segment of Kosher Corner, Rabbi Chaim Fogelman of the OK Kosher Labs, where they do kosher without compromise, will address the question, why keep kosher? Hi, and welcome to the Kosher Corner, where we discuss everything you need to know about kosher. My name is Rabbi Chaim Fogelman, and this program is brought to you by JLI and by OK Kosher Certification, where they do kosher without compromise. Today, we will take a deeper look at why keep kosher, and why are the laws of kosher so important. You know, some people are very finicky about kosher. They are very careful about what they eat, and they go to great lengths to investigate who certified the food that they eat, and they want to know every detail of how and when the kosher certification was done. It seems, when it comes to kosher food, they are more vigilant than they might be in the observance of other mitzvahs in God's commandments. And the question is why? Is the mitzvah of eating kosher different than any other mitzvah? Why are some people so scrupulous about not eating something that even has a remote chance of being not kosher? When it comes to kosher, some people seem to set a very high standard for themselves. And the question is why? You know the old saying, you are what you eat? Food is our lifeline. Food is our strength. The food gives us energy and it makes us who we are. Now since that's the case, we can now understand why a Jew who has a soul, a chelik aleka mimal mamash, literally a heavenly godly soul, would not want to receive any nourishment and life from a non-kosher, non-holy source. Now let's take a look at weight loss and people trying to lose weight. Anybody who has ever tried to lose weight knows a moment on the lips is a lifetime on the hips. It's very hard to rid the food and weight from our bodies once it has been eaten. This is true even according to science. Once a fat cell is created, you can't get rid of it. If you diet, you can only shrink that cell. But the fat cell itself almost always remains. And that's why people who work so hard to lose weight many times just gain it right back, even after a year or two. And that's because the fat cell is always there, just waiting to expand again. When you put something in your body, it essentially can be there, for a very long time. And the same holds true with kosher food. Once non-kosher food is eaten, it becomes part of you and can stay with you for a very long time. So now you might ask, so what? Is it so bad to have eaten something not so kosher? Is it the end of the world? So I have a little bit of treif in my body. Big deal. I'm still a good person and I do lots of good things. Well, in chapter 8 of the Tanya, the Tanya, the fundamental text of the Chabad Hasidic philosophy, written by the movement's founder, Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, in the 18th century, the Alter Rebbe, as he is known, he writes, If a person eats non-kosher food, even if he ate it accidentally, and then does a mitzvah with that strength, yes, he does a mitzvah, a good deed, he studied Torah, he prayed to God with great fervor, and he did it all with the strength that he got from the non-kosher food that he ate. Oh yes, he gets credit for doing the mitzvah, but the fact is, the non-kosher food that he ate is still in his body, and he is still connected and getting energy from a non-kosher and non-holy source. Now when a person eats something non-kosher, it also makes them less sensitive to the spiritual things in life, and he starts to see less and less of the hand of God in his day-to-day -day life. He or she starts to see things as mere coincidence, and a Jew's goal in life should be just the opposite. A Jew must try to recognize and appreciate the godly involvement and the godly control in every detail of our daily lives. Like the guy who had a very important business meeting that took him six months to set up. He arrived an hour early to park his car and set up. He wanted to be focused and poised, but he couldn't find the parking place for his car. He circled and circled the parking lot, and time was starting to run out. Out of desperation, he turns to God right there in his car and he says, God, I promise you, if you give me a parking spot, I'll give $100 to tzedakah. I will give $100 to charity. 
And as he says it, wouldn't you know, a car pulls out right in front of him and there's his spot. The man shouts, forget it God, I found the spot. Was it the hand of God or was it sheer coincidence? So now you understand why kosher is so important. It is crucial to know what is and what is not kosher. No, we can't rely on what a friend of a friend said. No, we can't just say, well, uh, I think it's kosher. Non-kosher food is poison to the soul, just like contaminated food is poison to the body. Would a person eat possibly tainted or contaminated food on the assumption that it's probably good? Most intelligent people would not. And if we are that careful with protecting our bodies, how much more so should we protect our souls? Which leads us to our next class. How do I know if something is really kosher? Can one decide for himself? Can I just read the label? And why is there the need for a kosher certifying agency? So please join us next time as we will once again delve a bit deeper into the laws of kosher, tackling one topic at a time. Until next time, I'm Rabbi Chaim Fogelman. Thank you for watching and may all your days be kosher ones.